All right. So those are the four data sets we need. Let's start with that, and then we'll come back to the stats one a bit after. Okay. So if anybody has downloaded those four data sets, you guys unzip them into a folder. So you should have. Um, let me open up my folders here. Right. So if you see every sh uh, so GIS data again comes in many formats, right? The most commonly used format is something called a shape file, okay? And the other formats include uh, you can bring in SQL databases, Oracle databases, you can bring in um, XMLs. There are many different formats uh, that GIS data can come in. But the most commonly used one, and one that's, one that's freely open, is known as Shapefile. Because if you want to use SQL tables, then you need Micro SQL Server. It needs a lot of overhead to use it. If you want to use Oracle, then you need an Oracle database. Right? But these are flat files. This is just like doc files or Excel files. But the only difference is a Shapefile always comes with a set of four or five other files with them. Okay? So these are the land district files. So you always have the .shp which is your geometry, which is the actual boundary of the particular land district, or the line, or the point. It holds the geometric information about the particular feature. Then, there's always something called a PRJ file. This is the projection file, and you can open that in a regular text file. I'm going to show it to you now. So this is the PRJ file, and what that holds is the projection and the coordinate system information. That's how the features, that the SHP file, the shape file, knows where to put these features on, on the Earth. Okay? So whenever you get a shape file, make sure that you have these set of files. The, the, the three main files that you're going to need, for sure, is a .shp, the .prj, which is the projection, and the .dbf. Which should be here, right? The .dbf file is the associated attribute table. So when we saw in the previous map, when I click on a particular region, <coughs> and I get these attributes with it, right? So when I clicked on the particular river, so let me turn on the river here. So when I click on a river, it's slow. So here is the so here's the point I click for Selvin, and here is the attribute, right? That's just this table that that's associated with that particular geometry, and that information is stored in your .dbf file, a database file, or the table file that comes with your geometry. Okay. So what's important is the geometry, the PRJ, which tells you the location of where it belongs on the on the map, and then the table, the associated attributes that come with this. That's what makes GIS powerful, is that you have the location, so you can start, you can immediately look at it and say, oh, that city is closer to that river than that city is to that river. Right? You can immediately start looking at, by looking at the map, you can say that. On top of that, you can also say, oh, that's called Selvin. It's got that particular code. It's got that particular information. So this is the power of GIS, that it combines attributes your textual information along with a visual component, the geometries of the actual place. Excuse me. Yeah. How did you bring that uh, up? The table? Yeah. So just, so, do, can you see this in your map? Uh, so up top here, 
Um, you have. Is it in the browser? Not yeah, it's in the browser. In order to yeah, that's in the browser. Yep. And then. Yep. yep. So you can see the layers. Yep. And you can just turn them on and off. Mm -hmm. So they turn on and off on the map. And then you can just click on any of those features, and that will give you that information. We'll do the same in QGIS as well. You might not have added it, so yeah, so that's right. So you have center line. So these are the red ones of the rivers. So just click on the river. All the red lines. So if you turn, if you click on the checkbox, yeah, and that brings up the information. And you have clicked all those lines there. So if you click on one of those lines, okay. yeah. yeah, it takes some time because it's being a bit slow, but you'll get the item information with it. Yeah. Okay, so good, everybody's got the data. Unzipped in a folder on your local machine. Awesome. Let's get to QGIS. So I'm going to load up QGIS here. So make sure to open up your GIS. Software. Yep. You might not see all of the tools that I have, so don't worry about it because I have. Let me just uh, let me just show you how it's supposed to look. Um, let me close some of my toolbars here. That should be more of what you should see. Yeah? Okay, just a quick overview of the interface. So what you have here on the left is something called the QGIS browser. So that's pretty much your file explorer. So you can navigate and get your files and all of that. This is called the layers panel. Each one of these panels are dockable, so you can move them around. So you can um, pull them out and you know place them wherever. Um, I just like them here, stock, that's just me, you can move them around. And the layers panel is where all your layers will show up when you bring them in. And then this is your main map section. This is where your map shows up. <coughs> okay, so let's navigate to our, to our folders here on the left, where you've just unzipped your files right now. So I'm going to navigate to my data folder. I'm going to bring in the um, I should call the, the same thing. So I've just renamed my files uh, to whatever I want them, but uh, you, you should have different names possibly. So, uh, let me just go ahead and download the ones with the proper names so you can just be on the same page. Let's bring in your points first, right? Those should be that that should be all your place names. So your data will be called NZ underscore place names electorate deprecator or something. You just drag the shape file into QGIS. Yeah. Were you able to? Uh, what was that? The land on. The one that's called place names. Yeah, that one. Uh, can you expand can you expand this window here? Look at the file. Yeah, so the dot shp, you want to drag that in. Yeah, yeah. So, cool. so you got your place names there. So these are the points that we've just downloaded. Uh, and some tools up here. So this one is your zoom in, zoom out, 
one to one is pretty to extend. So let's go with the zoom in button, or you can scroll either way. Uh, I'll click on the zoom in, and it starts zooming in. And you can start looking at how the data is being presented. Right? So these are all the places that's in the gazette for the music, uh, for the music uh, gazette. Okay, you can clearly see, but just not even look. If you didn't even know, but just looking at the distribution of the cities, you can say that's New Zealand, right? You don't need the New Zealand boundary, you don't, because they're all where they're supposed to be on the earth, and you get an idea of how New Zealand looks like. Okay, so these are all the places in New Zealand. We can right click on your layer and go to open attribute table, okay? I'm going to dock it to my right here, just for this purpose, okay. So what you see here is every point on the map has got an associated record in the table, right? So if I go in here and So if I, let's say I want to know where Island Bay is, okay? So I see in my, so one way of doing it, let me close the table for now, go back here. I'm looking at these points, I want to know what these points are. So I can zoom in, let's say I want to zoom into the Banks Peninsula, okay? And then I'm going to use this icon here, the one that says I, with identified features. Okay, so you can click on that, click on identify features, and then click on a point. Yeah? So now you, you want to see all the associated attributes that are, that are coming with those particular points. Yeah? Can you see that? Because mine shows that, 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 how do I expand that? Sorry? That, it's not oh, just expand there, yeah. So that, so the way GIS does it is these are the attributes that are down here that came with the data set. Okay? These ones are, these are all in your .dbf file. Okay? Now, on, on top here, you have something called derived. Okay, derived. These values are the values that QGIS is telling you about the point. Okay, so what this is telling you is the x, y of the particular point. Okay, and then oh, it's, it's the same. The, the, so it's saying this is where you clicked, and this is the actual coordinate of the feature. Okay, and as you can see, these are not latitude longitudes. This is not because your latitude longitudes. Your uh, longitudes are going to go from 0 to positive 180 and 0 to negative 180. Okay, and then your latitudes are going to go from 0 to 90 and 0 to 90. So all your lat longs are going to be, if, if you see any number here that is not between 0 to 90 or 0 to 180, then you're not in lat long. You're in some other coordinate system. This is the NZTM coordinate system. These are all in meters. Okay, so now I can actually uh, measure the distance between the two points in meters. Okay, it's hard to do when you have in degrees, but in meters it makes a lot more sense. Okay, so now we've clicked. So, you, so you've clicked on the point, and for me, I've clicked here, which is Spencerville in Cashier City. Okay, those are the attributes that came along with that particular shape file. Now, the other way of looking at it, and if you just click away, if you just click anywhere else in the white space, it clears your selection. Then, when you right click and open the attribute table here, on the layer, if you right click on the layer, and you open the attribute table. Now, let's say I want to know where, for example, uh, what's it, Hunsbury. Let's say I want to know where Hunsbury is. So I'm looking at the table, I'm going to the table, 
but I have too many pawns on the map. I don't know what I'm looking for. I want to know where Hunsbury is. So I just select Hunsbury here. That row, I select that row, and then I click on this magnifying glass on the top. It says zoom map to selected rows. Okay, so I click on that, and the map now has zoomed me in. It has selected the point for me and it shows me on the map where Hunsbury is. Yeah? No? So, yep, yep, now minimize the window, close it, it would have, ah, it's not zooming in. Oh, but that's because you've got to be in the zoom in. Can you zoom in again? You have to zoom in. Oh, zoom out. Uh, you can scroll as well. Yeah. Oops. Okay, so, um, just a quick navigation tools. Um, Scrolling in, sc uh, scrolling up zooms in, scrolling down zooms out. Uh, you can click on the scroll to pan. Yeah? But are you still not seeing the yellow dot? So uh, it doesn't want to pan? No, no, so, so to pan, you gotta click that. Um, so you can click that and pan around. Mm -hmm. And to zoom, you can just scroll up. Okay, and then now I've open this attribute table. Hansberry zoom map to selected rows. Oh, and there it is. So now it's showing you the yellow, and that's what Hansberry is. Yep. Um, same way, I can open the attribute table now. And I can sort on location. Yeah. And I'm going to scroll down to Christchurch City. Yeah. And I'm going to select a few rows. Let's say from here to here. I'm going to select like five records or six records. Okay. Immediately. Open in the attribute table tells me a few things. First, on top, total number of features, 6,712. That tells me that in this map, there are 6,712 points, and here are all the points and the associated attributes with them. Then, it also tells me, right now, I've selected six features. Okay? Then, I can click on the same zoom to button. Okay? And now it's going to highlight me all the points that I've selected in the attribute table. Okay, so this is a way to go back and forth between the attribute table and the geometries. So you can click on a geometry, get the attribute information, or you can go to the attribute and get the geometry information. You can go back and forth. Right? Is that clear? Okay. Now, let's go ahead and let's bring in some other layers. So I'm going to bring in the, the rivers, the river lines, not the polygons, the lines. I'm going to bring in my uh, regions as well. Now, if you bring them in, they're going to have you bottom in like this. Is that how it's looking for you right now? So, on your on your table of contents, you have regions, rivers, um, and then points. What's the extension for that paper? SHP file. Not SHP. This one. Yep, that one. And then if you uh, no. yeah, land districts. So go up one more. SHP. Yeah, SHP, yeah. Land districts SHP. Okay, so if you bring them in, what you can do is you can always organize how you want your map to look. So obviously uh, the uh, the standard practice is to have your polygons at the very bottom, then lines, then points. Right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my regions, which is my polygons, and I'm going to move it down. So they go below my points and lines. And then I'm going to take my lines and move it below the points. 
right so now it's ordered so I have my biggest area at the bottom then I have my lines on top and then the points on top of that just yep oh uh, yeah just zoom out sorry just zoom out or you can just click on that yeah and that is yeah that zoom out all the way oh, it's Sorry. and then just click on that and then move it below the points yep and now it's on top and then move your lines below the points the yeah, that's the lines. So no, above the, above that. Yeah, there. Perfect. Right. So in QGIS, it will show you what kind of feature it is. It will show you if it's a point, line, or a polygon just by looking at the symbology here. Okay. Then we're gonna do some basic cartography. So now we have. Uh, you can turn on and off layers, mm -hmm. as you saw. So just let's turn off our points and lines and just leave the polygons open. Okay, so now we're looking at a regional map of New Zealand and we have all of our regions now um, pulled up. Now what we want to do is we want to, if you've seen any map of New Zealand, you would have seen a beautiful thematic map showing different colors for the different regions. Uh, so we're gonna just quickly do that. So let's right click on the regions layer or your uh, uh, deprecated places, or oh, sorry, the land, land districts. Sorry, let's click on your land district layer, and then click on properties. Right, so this is your properties window for the particular layer. You can control a lot of things about how the layer looks, behaves, and functions in this particular window. So first, initially, in the general tab on the left, what you see is the source. Where is this layer located? On your computer. Then, you have the coordinate system that the data is in. Okay? And then, finally, you have some other scale-dependent visibility. So we'll, uh, we won't go into the detail of that. But what that means is I can set the scale at which these layers become visible. Okay, so I'll explain that in a bit. Um, let me just go to the next tab here called style. So let's go to style. Okay, so this is where we style our layer. This is where we say we want Canterbury to come up as red and we want Auckland to come up as blue, so on and so forth. So on top here, we have a few options on the first level. So we have single symbol, which means we want to represent all the features in this layer with one color. There might be a reason for that in your map. We don't know. You know. Uh, the second one is categorized, which is what we're going to pick. Okay. So categorized means I want to style my map based on a particular category, and the categories are each one of your columns in your shape file. Okay. So if you pull down on that column list, you would see the three attributes that's available to us in that particular shape file. Okay, name, area. So I'm, I'm going to click on <coughs> name. Okay, and then I'm going to choose a color ramp of your choice. You can pick, you're free to pick any color ramp you want. I'm just going to go uh, with a spectral. And then I'm going to click on classify. Okay? Yep. I yep. don't have those style. I don't have in general. Oh, symbology, yeah, they call it symbology here. I guess they've changed it in the new version. So, I don't have that. Yeah, up here. Okay. Single symbol, pull down. Change that to categorize. Yeah, and then now the column. Yeah, pick name. And then do, oh, pick a color brand any color you want, and then choose classify. And then the general, what's the general? General is your, oh, they've broken it up into, oh, they've given a lot more options in the new version. I don't have the new version actually, I have the older one. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the general over here would be the same as information and 
source. Yeah. Okay, so now once you've classified, what we have here is a, or what the color app I've picked is just randomly taken all my values and put into different colors. And now I can hit OK. Right? Now I have different colors for my different regions. Simple as that. Yep. Make sense? Um, the other option, let me see. So now, um, I want to talk about a bit about uh, the scale dependent that I was talking about earlier. What scale dependent means is, if you look at my screen right now, all of New Zealand, okay, all of New Zealand now is visible at that scale, 1 to 18 million. Okay, that's my scale here at the bottom. 1 to 18 million. So that's what they meant when they said that the rivers were digitized or were captured from 1 to 500k. Which means if I go to my scale here and I type 500,000, and then turn on my rivers, oh, it's a really bad color pick. Uh, let me zoom in. So this is one to 500,000, okay? So what they've done is they have hand-drawn the rivers at this scale, okay? So they, have, they either have a satellite imagery or they have an aerial imagery that they've taken and at this scale is where this data was initially developed, okay? And that's why if you look at an imagery at this level, the lines of the rivers will perfectly line up, right? But as you zoom in, you can tell there's more detail coming in and because of more detail there's going to be an error in your data right does it make sense okay so just to add one more thing the other thing that QGIS is really good at is because it's open source and it's got a huge community people are constantly developing tools and plugins for QGIS okay so one of the plugins we're going to download today is something called the OpenStreetMap plugin. So if you just go to plugins menu and then hit on manage and install plugins. It'll come up and refresh all the plugins. And we're going to download, just start typing in Google Map. Uh, there should be something called, or uh, just at Google on the search, mm -hmm. and you will see something called an open layers plugin. If you just go to plugins, mm -hmm. okay, so maybe try. really interesting that they've changed so much on the new one. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we're just able to install the plugin. Okay, 
So once you have that OpenLayers plugin, 